So Starlink has definitely been spotty when doing my live streams, and kind of mid to late last year, T-Mobile started launching this home internet package, which I thought was kind of interesting, but I was getting mixed reviews. The first generation hardware they sent out was having overheating issues, and people were having to jerry-rig ways of cooling it down. They've since resolved those issues in early 2022, and I've been noticing T-Mobile cellular service to actually get a tad more reliable and a bit faster in my area. I don't have T-Mobile on my smartphone it's Itself, I use Mint Mobile, but they are piggybacking off of the T-Mobile network, and I was curious to see how much more stable my live streams could be if I could do everything just off of the cellular connection instead of relying on low Earth orbit satellites. So in today's video, we're going to be unboxing the latest generation gateway, setting it up, doing some speed tests, and seeing how it compares to Starlink internet. Let's begin. Okay, so I wasn't entirely sure if they were going to give me the next generation modem because some people had gotten deliveries recently that were not the latest gen, but this box is definitely a lot smaller. The technology feels a lot more simple than Starlink with that giant box behind me, but this is just over four pounds and they shipped it out to me in a couple days. The whole process of getting it out to me though was quite frustrating. It was not a simple like order now button on a website. You have to like chat in and answer a a bunch of stupid questions. I'll get into that in my main review, but it seems like we're starting off with a bunch of random paperwork. Okay, we have another layer of cardboard, another layer of cardboard, and here the box is itself, all wrapped up in paper. This is actually a bit smaller than I was expecting it to be, but I'm kind of impressed by how compact they're able to make an antenna and a router and a modem, so you don't need any additional hardware other than what is provided here. It's made of plastic, so you know, it's not the most premium feeling in the world, but that's the other point I should mention about this service. If it ends up being very stable and very reliable, it's actually half the price of Starlink at just $50 a month, which is way cheaper than any of the landline Wi-Fi options I had in my area. Back when we were on Comcast, it was $150 a month, so I was excited when Starlink launched because it was 50 bucks cheaper, and now this is even 50 bucks cheaper than Starlink. So I'm curious how stable it is, and I'm curious how fast it'll be, and I'm happy to notice already on the back we have two ethernet ports plus two USB-C connectors. Not micro USB, none of that stupid barrel power plug stuff. Type-C is the best port. So that gets a A in my book. And I believe at the bottom we should get a power adapter of sorts, which of course powers this whole thing via type C. I wonder what wattage this is, because honestly, if I could power this thing off of my MacBook Pro, I feel like I could almost take it with me. That would be kind of interesting. What does it say? I think this is a 45 or 15 watt brick, which I don't know if my MacBook would support, but it'd be kind of interesting if you could take this with you as long as you provided your own power source of some kind, but they probably restrict it to only work in my area. I don't know yet. But allegedly, according to the quick start guide and the very simple instructions, yeah, it's pretty simple. You just position it somewhere in the house where it's near a window. That way you're more likely to be closer to an antenna. It says ideally on an upper floor, but I don't have one of those because I'm poor. But as soon as you provide power to this thing, it will power itself on within five seconds. There's already a SIM card pre-installed. I don't know why they need to tell me that, but I guess there is. And it should automatically install the latest firmware update, and then you you just have to download this T-Mobile internet app on your phone and scan a QR code and that's how you boot up the whole thing. So it sounds pretty simple. Let's find out just how simple it is. This cable is naturally pretty long, which is good. And okay, it's plugged in. It has power. There's a little display on here, but as tempting as it may be, I guess this is not a touch screen. You just have like a left and right arrow key and a little home button. It says powering up right now. Right behind you guys next to the camera is the window. So I assume, you know, with my phone, I get pretty good speeds right here on my desk so I assume this should get pretty decent speeds where it is currently and you got to be careful with this hardware because they do not sell you the tower itself you basically just have access to this hardware when you're paying $50 a month but if you cancel you have to return this hardware you're basically just renting it from T-Mobile I think I read they can charge you up to like $400 if you damage this or break it in some way shape or form so be careful where you put it so it says to download the T-Mobile mobile internet app which I 
I have right here. I'm filming on my iPhone, so I would normally use that. But for you guys, I gotta use the iPad the way it was meant to be. Have this blow up right here. There we go. It asks you which device you're setting up. There's the LTE gateway and the 5G gateway. That's the one we're doing. Then the next question is, on a scale of 1 to 7, why do we stop at 7? Team Milk, why not 10? Whatever. It says, how confident are you that you would be able to complete a do-it-yourself project if instructions and materials are provided? Normally, I would say no, but I have a feeling that it's not going to let me set it up unless I say 7, so yes, I'm very confident. Now it wants me to scan the QR code on the gateway, which there appears to be one on the back here, so I'm just gonna scan this. Tells me to connect to power, and it already is. And now it tells me to wait for two minutes for it to completely start up. Alright, let's see if the magic happens. Five, four, three, two, one. It's now been two minutes, and... <sighs> Nothing has happened. Maybe they needed the M1 chip in this thing. Next! Oh, you need to tap a button to wake it up. Okay, you didn't tell me that. Let's download the T-Mobile app. Okay, I did that. Okay, now it's connecting to the Wi-Fi network, so it says connecting to Gateway. I'm gonna hit join. Now it says unable to join the network. Great. It just works. Okay, now it's gonna ask me to enter the password, which is, I think, already displayed on the back. Okay, I've entered the password, and what does it say on the front now? I guess I gotta wake it here. Still wants me to scan the code. It tells me that my connection quality here is good. I would was hoping for very good, maybe not excellent. That's a little too much, but maybe if I get it closer to the window later, I'll actually get some better signal. On this screen, it says four bars, but on the app screen, it says connection. Connection quality is good. Oh, okay. Hit refresh and now it says very good. So, okay. I believe it's technically set up. Oh, weird. I got something on the screen that says, Attention, internet connection issue. Disconnect the power cord for 10 seconds. If the issue persists, contact customer support. I guess we're unplugging it and plugging it back in. I rebooted the thing. It now claims to be connected. We'll see if it actually is. I should probably do a straight ethernet test directly into this device to see how fast it really is when you're tapped into its full hardware. I also could probably get it closer to the window if I really tried. So the setup was a little clunky. It needed a reboot and getting the passwords on the back because there's two different passwords to choose from was a little bit confusing. However, I like how small it is. I like how little noise it's making. It's making these faint little clicking sounds, but pretty hard to pick up on. So I'm just going to plug it into my MacBook and see how fast it is. Okay, we've got the solid signal here. Let's load up fast.com. And we're plugged in via ethernet now. Ooh, whoa, okay, that's a lot better. 200 down, I could live with that. 220? So like just after I did that speed test, once again, this had an internet connection issue. So now I'm getting a tad worried that that's happened twice in a row. Like, is it gonna keep crashing and needing to be rebooted? I sure hope not. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm just using the internet. I guess I shouldn't have done that. So I've been doing some testing for the past hour and it crashed three times in total. And for some reason, it seemed to stop crashing after the third time. I did not contact customer supports. I just unplugged it and plugged it back in a couple of times. It did seem to want to be reset up through my phone. And when I set it up through my phone, it actually let me decide the Wi-Fi network name and password. Maybe just by going through the iPad app, that experience was more buggy and it was resulting in the whole thing crashing. But I've actually been live streaming this video editing process through the T-Mobile home internet network for our channel members. Thank you for your support, by the way. And we've now been live for 51 minutes at an 8,000 kilobit per second bit rate with zero frame drops, which is substantially better than anything I was able to get over Starlink. You know, in total speed, Starlink was very volatile and, you know, on a good day, I could get around 250 downloads. Now, with some Ethernet speed tests on T-Mobile, I'm getting close to that, around 250. But the biggest difference is upload and stability of that upload speed, which actually matters, especially when you're live streaming. You need a really consistent signal. And Starlink, especially into 2022, was unfortunately getting worse in terms of stability. I was having to continuously lower my bit rate. And even when I did that, we would still have frame drops or large amounts of compression when live streaming, whereas I've never been able to set my bitrate to 8,000 before, and thankfully, the connection seems to be pretty stable. So, because T-Mobile Home Internet is deprioritized compared to actual T-Mobile customers, I gotta do a lot more testing to see how live streaming will do at different times of the day when the network is more congested. But the good news is, even if you're not live streaming, the general upload 
performance has been quite a bit better. In most of the speed tests I've done with T-Mobile home internet, I'm seeing between 20 and 30 megabits upload. And while Starlink used to get that back when I was on the beta program, ironically, more recently, it's been struggling to average 20 and it's more sticking to around 10 megabits up or 15. And even then it's inconsistent. It'll sometimes go up, but all their times go down quite a bit. So that means that posting content takes a little bit longer. And of course the live streams are very unstable. So here's hoping T-Mobile home internet can remain as stable as it's been for me in the past hour. And if it does stay like it has been, then this very well may be my new permanent internet provider. But again, we've got some more testing to do and probably some live streams for you guys to watch on this very channel. So stay tuned for more of those. Let me know how your guys' experience has been. If you have T-Mobile home internet down in the comments below, this is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you all in the next one.